but since we cannot see God with our eyes, we may formulate these two hypotheses. Hypothesis 1. God does not exist. Hypothesis 2. I live inside God. That is why I cannot see. Hi, how are you? Welcome to all of you that are watching and hearing me for the first time. Now you can also follow me on Instagram and I will keep you updated and we can catch up during the week. There is a popular quote that says, if I don't see it, I don't believe it. And this was one of my favorite quotes during my life. In general, as scientists, I think we take that like a way of thinking. How can I believe in something or somebody that I cannot see? Well, there are many things that we don't see, but we believe. If God existed, we should see him face to face. But actually, there are many things in our daily life that we cannot see and we think that exist. For example, the oxygen that is in the air, we need and we use it in a daily basis. However, we cannot see it. Viruses, bacteria, we don't see it, we believe that if we touch a dirty surface, we can get infected because the diseases that they can cause, especially with the coronavirus. We have one year and a half wearing masks and preventing others and preventing myself to spread the virus because it could be airborne coronavirus infection. Then we don't see, sometimes need a microscope to see, but even if we have no microscope, we think that they exist. However, why believing in God is so difficult for us? I mentioned in another episode that we need a little faith, a little faith to trust in someone, trust in the world that are in the Gospel, in the Bible. And I want for you today to make this mental exercise. Imagine that you believe these words that are in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17. For in Him we live, we move, and we have our existence. But since we cannot see God with our eyes, we may formulate these two hypotheses. Hypothesis 1. God does not exist. Hypothesis 2. I live inside God. That is why I cannot see. Yes, in the same way, that when we are babies, we have been nine months in the womb of our mom. I have a friend that is expecting twins. And imagine that twins that start to communicate inside the mom between each other and arguing about if they have or not mom. One of the twins is more a platonic thinker and 
think that there is another world and his mom exists. However, the another twin is more like a Descartes rationalism thinker. Then, because cannot demonstrate, cannot see, cannot touch his mom, then said, I have no mom. Imagine that conversation in the belly of your mom. <laughs> it's funny, right? Well, although they cannot see or touch their mom, they can hear. We can hear the voice of our mom when we are in the womb, and we can distinguish from other voices because the vibration of the sound is very different when it's coming through inside and we can distinguish from other outside voices that voice of the mother speaking to the twins can give them peace and express love that in some way they can feel it when I seek that peace and love outside in other voices I only found substitutes, which do not last long. However, when I seek that internal voice, I can feel that love and peace even in the bad circumstances. I can hear that voice, and that voice makes me effects that are long-lasting. Well. This is for me what prayer is. Prayer is to listen to the voice of the one in whom we live, we move, and we exist. Learning to listen to that voice is not easy, but it's not difficult either. It's like walking. When we learn to walk, at the beginning we just crawling. Then we take some drunk steps and finally we start walking and eventually running. That is what happened with prayer. The beginning you think you, you can pray, then you start to distinguish the voice of God from other voices and at the end you start a dialogue with God. Listen the Word of God and talking to God. This dialogue can change everything. This dialogue can help us to motivate to continue living inside that uterus until the bag will break and we will die eventually. In that moment we will see God face to face similar to the newborn that meets his mom at last, face to face. What can prevent us from believing, feeling, and listening to God? I will share that in the next episode. And if you have started to practice to listen to the voice of God, I can give you an advice. These are words that are in Psalm 94. If today you hear the voice of God, don't harden your heart. Be hard.